Hello everyone, it's Miss Elise from the Morristown and Morris Township Library, and today I have another art adventure for you based off of a piece that you probably know very well. It is Kanagawa Okinami Ura, or Under the Wave of Kanagawa, otherwise known as The Great Wave, by Karasushika Hokusai, who is a Japanese uh, woodblock artist from uh, 1830s uh, Japan, which was actually the Iru period of Japanese history. It was a period led by the Tokugawa shogunate, the military government system that they had in place at the time, which uh, the society experienced economic growth, they had strict social orders and isolationist foreign policies, meaning that the Japanese really only stayed on the island of Japan and didn't venture out into um, China or even the Western world. The painting, The Great Wave, is actually from a series uh, called The 36 Views of Mount Fiji, which um, you can see in the smallest uh, corner of the painting, which is a great play of perspective on Hokusai's part. The painting was painted in 1830 or 1832, which is almost 190 years ago. It is actually a woodblock print, which is a technique where an artist uses a woodblock carving to print ink and color onto paper, cloth, fabric, or other types of materials. It was a popular technique founded in ancient China and had been used by Asian countries for centuries. Hokusai was a great master of the woodblock, the woodblock printing art and made almost over 700 prints in his lifetime, a lot of which were bought and owned by uh, Monet, which is a famous impressionist painter in France at the same time period. This piece is, in particular, is a symbolic representation of a lot of Asian art in the Western world, and it introduced a lot of Japanese and Asian techniques to Western artists and kind of brought up an entire new art movement of Japanisma, which is uh, Eastern-inspired principles on Western art. But this painting is incredibly important to Japan because it is so recognizable for their country and acts as a symbol and a gateway for foreigners to the country of Japan and into their culture, introducing them to their culture. So now that we know a little bit of history on Hokusai's The Great Wave, why don't we get into our seat collage craft for today. So let's get started with our craft. These are the few things that you're going to need in order to do this craft. Starting with uh, white and blue tissue paper. I have cut up mine already into smaller squares, but you can take a different approach and tear it if you want to, or cut it into different shapes if that suits your fancy. I like working in squares, so I cut mine down to a size that I was comfortable with. But you're also going to need some markers. Now these markers are an alternative to paint if you don't have paint at home. Um, I recommend using the colors gray, blue, and black, especially if you do have different shades of blue. Um, as you can see, these markers are double-sided, which is really, really handy when working with um, textures, so that way you can make things bigger or smaller, uh, but it is not necessary. You're also going to need a sponge or a brush of some sort and a white paint. You're also going to might want to, if you do have paint at home, I recommend getting some blue paints as well. You're also going to need some Mod Podge and a paintbrush, or if you don't have Mod Podge, you can use a mixture of glue and water and it'll work just as well. 
You are also going to need some pastels. These can be oil pastel or chalk pastel. Um, it doesn't really matter. We're using glue, so it's going to stick over top of it anyway. Um, in particular, I'm using the blue and gray shades. Um, as you can see, mine comes in a stick form. Yours might come in um, a different kind of form, either pencil or wrapped. Um, but it, it all works the same. And last but not least, I'm going to be using a darker shade of paper today. This is, I think, a piece of cardstock, but I could be um, wrong. You can use whatever kind of paper you have offhand. I want to kind of make mine look a little bit similar to Hokusai's painting, so I'm going with this. So let's get started. So I'm going to start by taking my pastels and kind of, I'm using this uh, periwinkle shade, it's sort of a medium shade between dark blue and light blue, and I'm just going to create a bit of an outline of how I want my seascape to, to look. I'm going to sort of mimic Hokusai's uh, composition and have my wave coming up from the left side of my paper, but you can do whatever makes you feel happy. Um, and I'm going to draw this out kind of and shade it in. Uh, with my fingers because chalk pastel is really really good at blending and um, yeah I'm going to make uh, this sort of a shape as you can see here but chalk pastel is really really good at blending so I'm going to do that and speed it up a little bit for you as you can see this is the kind of shape I'm going for and I'm taking a darker blue and adding in a bit of a depth to the water and some highlights. Sorry, this is a little cut off. I guess my camera moved a little bit. But now that I have that and my hands are dirty, I'm going to wash them so that way we can move on to the next step. So, once we have our hands washed and everything's all good, I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to open it up and start gluing down the pieces on my the pieces of tissue paper onto my paper. Pardon me while I try to open this for a sec. And I'm going to start by taking my blue and I'm just going to kind of lay it about where I want it to go. I'm aiming for layering the tissue paper in the darker spots so that way it's a little bit darker than the rest of the the wave so it gives a little bit of a depth to it. Um, so I'm just going to start painting my glue onto my paper. And I am going to leave the lighter bits um, alone for right now just because I want to I don't have a lighter colored blue tissue paper, so um, I'm going to leave that alone so that way I can blend the white into the blue. But as you can see, I'm just kind of laying it down, and I'm trying to keep into the shape as much as possible, and towards the darker parts as much as possible. Um, with the Mod Podge, especially if you have a glossy Mod Podge, if you are using Mod Podge, if you're using glue, totally okay. Um, you wanna, you can go right over the tissue paper with the Mod Podge, that's no problem. Um, it's just gonna give it a bit of a glossy or a matte finish depending on the type that you have. Um, as you can see here, that's what I'm kind of doing. I want everything to kind of have a very shiny texture so that way it's easier for me to um, blend the texture of the paint that I'm going to use. But as you can see here, I am adding the whites in slowly to the painting, and I'm overlapping the blue with the white to give it kind of a rougher texture. So once that's drying, I'm going to add a sun in the corner, because I feel like it needs a little space there, so I'm using red and orange yellow pastels to do so. Once I have that done, we're going to work on the paint. I'm going to be taking this lighter blue and I'm going to add it into the areas that I think need lightening and a little bit of 
um, highlighting on my waves. So I'm just going to be taking a one inch brush, uh, but you can use whatever brush that you own. It's okay. And I'm going to dip it in there, like so. And just kind of follow the organic form of the wave in uh, that kind of a motion, just to give it a little bit more of a highlight did effect and um, kind of like show the refractions on the water from the sunlight that you see in real life. I'm going to continue this throughout the rest of the waves and I'm actually going to add in a little of a darker blue just to get a bit of a medium shade so that way I can blend it in a little bit more and it's going to look a little bit more cohesive. Um, the paint on top of the Mod Podge is a little uh, rough. <laughs> it's not going to go on as nicely but it is acrylic paint that I'm using so um, it should. it's not going to be the end of the world. So once I kind of have the basic structure, I'm going to wet my brush off and I'm going to go in with the white paint, which is incredibly important. I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to dip it in and I'm going to go completely over the um, white uh, crashing wave areas of my painting and splattering white paint with my paintbrush across that. That's just going to give it great texture. And there we have the final product. It looks super cool, super rough, and you can see all the textures of the waves going in on in there with the bright contrast of the sun behind it. Um, I hope you enjoyed following along with this craft with me. I had a lot of fun making it, and I'll see you guys next week. Have a great week.